it was a blessing from God. I, I don't know else what else to say. Without Metro State being eligible and having a track program or a running program, I would have probably just not have competed. And I wouldn't have became, you know, the six-time All-American that I was or the two-time national champion. Anthony Luna was a stud runner at Ranham High School in Westminster, Colorado. He had offers to run collegiately both in Division I and with RMAC powerhouses like Adams State. However, the young man would have a child and that put a wrench in his running career. That was the main reason why I didn't uh, sign up for any college. Uh, and it was only because financially I didn't think I was going to be able to make it. You know, I, uh, my dad, uh, very old fashioned, you know, and said, Hey, well, you know, if, you know, this is what's going to happen and you, you know, it's time to be a man, you're going to step up and, and take care of you, take care of your child and take care of your, of your girlfriend. Luna would end up becoming an electrician to make ends meet, but his mind was never far away from the track. But it's something that I always thought about, you know, I mean, I'd be on, I remember being on the job working as an electrician and thinking to myself, like, I should be on the track, you know, I should be getting ready for, for a big race right now and not, you know, figuring out which wires I need to plug in a wall or whatever the case. <laughs> then a phone call changed his life forever. For Metro State, when they, when they started their program in 05, honestly, I didn't know that they were starting a program. It was until Pete Joyne called me, let me know, hey, we're starting a track program. I was thrilled. I couldn't even tell you how happy I was. I mean, it could have been um, the Bad News Bears as my teammates, and I wouldn't have cared. Former Regis assistant coach Pete Julian was starting the cross country and track and field team at Metro State and wanted Luna on his team. I was fortunate enough that when I was in high school, I, I, I believed in my program, which is why I was so successful in both cross country and track. You know, and then when I got into college, you know, I, I wanted to believe in Pete Julian. But Pete Joy needed to be credible for me to believe him. I mean, he was exactly that guy. Luna had to sit out his first year with the program so he could build his strength and get back into running shape. Needless to say, he was humbled quickly once he hit the track during the 2006-2007 season. I got beat. <laughs> I got beat pretty bad. If anything, I was just a, like a mediocre guy out there, you know, running and training and, you know, just kind of, just kind of making ends meet at that point. There were some dark times for Luna during that first season of competition. He second guessed whether he made the right choice to come back to running, but he remembered that fate brought him here and he couldn't give that up. And I remember looking at myself in the mirror. I was after a cross country race and I had gotten beaten really bad. And uh, I contemplated if this was the right move or not, right? Because I mean, I think every athlete struggles with that at some particular point. You know that something happens and it doesn't really go their way and if like you want to talk about fate i think fate was fate played play such a huge role in in me coming even to metro state because i mean if it wouldn't have been for my son being born i would have ran for a different school and i would have never ran for metro state i would have never met pete julian you know and if uh if you know it was uh the connection that uh of someone that i knew that that Coach Pete used to coach at Regis is how he even got my name anyways, or else he would have never even knew who I was. Right. You know, like just these these spontaneous connections that so happened to happen, happened. Mm -hmm. And that's how I wound up where I was. So I remember every time I would I would think those thoughts, I would always go back to this is all happening for a reason. Trust the process and get through the next get through the next day. Things turned around for Luna during his sophomore year with the Roadrunners. His hard work and dedication to the sport improved his confidence, but a race in California may have been the cog that set his national championship story in motion. Uh, with 100 meters to go, me and Sean Stroman are, are, are battling back and forth. We're neck and neck. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember it was like I would give it gas, he would give it gas, and we're battling, battling, and we come to the finish line. 
and I ended up falling. I uh, I broke my wrist in the process. Oh wow! Uh, and we didn't I, we didn't know who won it first, and until we were able to look at the the prompt screen and they found out that Sean Stroman had beat me by two one hundredths of a second. You right. know, I lost the race by so. Um, well, I mean, I was super. I was upset because I had lost, but I was I wasn't that upset because I had gave it my all. I I, I that was the probably the hardest say hundred meter I, I've ever ran, and mm. I mean to to lose to a, a a senior, and I was only a sophomore. You know, I wasn't too disappointed with myself, and at that point, people started knowing who I was. In two thousand nine, Luna was no longer a secret. The junior was the favorite in the 800 meters that season, and everyone knew it. Yeah, I mean, knowing that, that the guy that I wanted, uh, with Sean Stroman graduating, mm -hmm. um, I figured, yeah, I mean, this is this is the year I have to win it, right? I mean, everyone knows that I'm coming back, you know, and that I'm, you know, more hungry than ever. And I remember just thinking to myself, like, yeah, this is going to be, this is the beginning of this year is just going to be, everything for me. At the Washington Husky Classic in February of 2009, Luna ran the second fastest time in Division II, earning an automatic bid to the national championship meet in Houston. Luna remembers his thoughts just before the big race with the national championship on the line. At this point, I, I remember thinking to myself, well, my fitness is here, um, my mind's in the right place, my, my body's been in the right place, my nutrition's in the right place. I've done everything I can to become a champion, you know, so now it was just, it was that time for me to, to execute. I remember stepping on the line right before the gun going off and feeling the, the rush of adrenaline go through me and, and thinking to myself, yeah, I was going to win it. There was, there was no second guessing in my mind. Coach Julian offered him some last minute advice that would be crucial to the outcome. Pete Julian pulled me aside and, and he told me, he says, the only way you're gonna win this race is if you take the lead with 200 meters to go. He says the, tra the track is too narrow and you won't be able to pass in these turns. You have this, uh, the ability to win the race, but you have got to take the lead with 200 meters to go. I did just that, you know, with, with the lap to go. I remember taking the lead from, I think it was from Adam States, uh, from Graham. I set on the, the boosters and I mean, it was, it was lights out from there. I think I even expanded my lead Anthony Luna was a national champion, the first individual to do so in Metro State history. I remember coming in through the finish line, I knew I was gonna win, and the feeling of being a national champion was overwhelming, you know? Coming through that finish line and, and seeing the guys that I train with day in, day out, and seeing my coach, you know, it was an unbelievable feeling and something that I'll always remember. Coach Julian offered his congratulations but did so in a way that any coach would. I remember Pete, uh, you know, when we hugged uh, there at the finish line, and he told me, uh, I said, hey coach, we did it. And that's when he told me, he said, uh, if you wanna be a real national championship, you gotta win the outdoor title. And that's what he said to me. <laughs> Luna would do just that and take first place in San Angelo, Texas for the Outdoor National Championship. I knew that I was gonna win. It was something that I just, I just knew I was gonna win. I had trained so hard, worked so hard, and now I had the confidence of winning these big races under my belt. I was able to throw down the hammer and, and, and never say, you know, say goodbye to the field. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't, with, with that win, you know, I was, uh, I was on cloud nine. His senior season would be riddled with injuries and would come up just short in the outdoor championships, finishing second. Luna graduated from Metro State, ending an incredible and at times improbable career with the Roadrunners. Just thinking about where I'd come from and the, the kind of sacrifices that I had made, and you know, the me being a young father, and I had so many people who told me that I, can't, I couldn't do it, you know? Mm -hmm. I had so many people tell me that, hey, like, it's just going to be too much work. You know, like, you have to go to school. You have to maintain a certain GPA. You got to take care of your son full time and take care of your girlfriend and take care of this and take care of that. And, and it was, at times, it was overwhelming. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. At times, I, 
you know, I'd get home and my son would be crying for, <laughs> for you know, it's how babies do. And I'd be trying to sleep and I had a big race in the morning and it wasn't going to happen. And, you know, there was more nights like that than there weren't, but it made, made me tough, you know, it, it made me mentally strong. And I was always a type of athlete that when you told me I couldn't do it, I was going to prove you wrong. Anthony Luna, a high school stud athlete, a son, a father, a teammate, a roadrunner, and a national champion.